Yeah, one of the cool things about uh, the World Economic Forum is that sometimes you get to interact with leaders of products that you use every single day of your life, and we use that a lot here at Yahoo Inc. So let's get uh, Carl Eschenbach, Workday CEO, uh, co-CEO, I should say, for another month. Uh, welcome. Thank you for having me, and thank you for being a customer hey, you know, and using the product. Well, we I hope those, it's a great experience. We pay those user. bills, absolutely. So <laughs> when I'm on Workday, and there's a lot of focus here on AI, when I'm on Workday in 2024, where will I start to see the application of AI? Well, I think you'll start to see things. People talk about co-pilots. It'll be uh, in the co-pilot area. We'll have generative AI co-pilots that will help you navigate through things. I think it will start to push to you recommendations around where you need to be skilled or reskilled and, and recommend to you what's next in, in your journey uh, to advance your career. I think also from a recruiting perspective, we can start to you know look at recruiting as a way that you'll be able to leverage AI. And then we have this thing called you know, a career insight hub that will help both managers and employees navigate their careers and give those recommendations on where you should go and get you know, new skills to advance your career. And it will help then with internal mobility of, of your people. Uh, and lastly, I would just say, leveraging AI on the Workday platform, we're gonna start to focus on reskilling and upskilling your workforce and driving productivity gains and I think that will drive a step function change in how we think about people uh, going forward. Let me, just, let me just follow quick, because I'm sending this video after it gets posted to, the, to our whole team. So I will be able to get a, pro I get a prompt. If, if, if Workday's platform is signaling that my skills are outdated, yes. I get a prompt saying, Brian, go back to school and get a certificate, or this is what you should be doing, and here are the skills you need. Yes, exactly right. Wow. That's yes. wild. You know, we keep having all these AI discussions. We have talked less about how much it's going to cost and how willing clients are to spend for these additional abilities. And is that money gonna be coming out of other types of enterprise spending? What do you think? You know, Julie, that is a great question. Um, and I'll respond by, we have taken a very measured and metered approach to talking about how we're gonna price AI. We fundamentally believe our customers pay us a subscription fee every year. They pay us an innovation index uplift each year for driving and helping us continue to innovate. We have not come to market like a lot of others and said we're going to raise our prices by 30% or some percentage just because we have AI now in our platform. We've been doing AI for more than a decade, so this isn't new to us and we think our customers are entitled to innovation, so we are not rushing to market with a new pricing model. That being said, if we see significant value in a new SKU that we're bringing to market, that our customers can truly realize that value, we will then obviously charge for it because it does cost us on the compute side to run those models and leverage the data that you're training off of. So I think we're uh, slightly different. I think it goes back to the core values of, the cus of, uh, of our company, right? We focus on our employees, our customers, and we do everything with the highest level of integrity. And our customers have responded really well this past year in our pricing approach to AI and not rushing to market and asking them to pay more. I mean, that said, if um, I'm not paying, say, more for your products, but I'm paying more for an AI upgrade elsewhere, do you think that we will see some sort of pullbacks in some areas in order to accelerate AI? Yeah, so I think you're asking, where does that budget come yeah. from, right? I, you know, listen, you know, if you go out and pull the market right around IT spending, there is now a line item that we're starting to see emerge uh, in the CIO organization and a company's budget uh, around AI. So where they're getting that, I think it's part of an investment, or they're maybe you know getting it from other areas of the business where you're going to leverage AI right um, and get productivity gains. Mm. What we're not seeing is we think it is an augmentation technology that needs to peacefully coexist with your existing workers. Because one of the things we're seeing is we're seeing this, no one's really talking about it a lot here this week. They talk about AI, they talk about regulation, but we're seeing a potential divide when it comes to trust. Companies want to implement this to drive you know, business benefit and drive productivity gains. But workers are very nervous that it's going to be used to displace their jobs. Mm -hmm. We think it's going to peacefully coexist with the workers. You'll get the business benefit of productivity gains, but we're going to augment what people do so that they can go off and do other tasks that are much more productive and relevant and really think about growth of the company uh, through a lens of productivity gains. Mm -hmm. Several folks that I talked to in the lead up to this have suggested you have a, a pretty big earnings unlock in CFOs and other organizations giving them or giving you their financials to, I guess, put in the cloud and, and store that. 
Where are you at in that? Because in the past, I have sensed a, a hesitance by CFOs to, to put all their financial data in the cloud. Yeah, no, we, um, we have two real core platform products. We have our HCM product that you guys use and you say you engage with every day. And then we have our financials product. Uh, the financials product is a cloud-based ERP solution um, that we have leaned heavily into in investing both on the product side and the go-to-market side. And the reason for that is what you just stated. Only 25% of the financial workloads or ERP is in the cloud. So there is a massive transition to cloud-based ERP in the future, and we think with our solution, we're gonna capture a large market share of that, especially if they're an existing you know, Workday customer on the HCM side. So when the other thing we're seeing uniquely is as we land new customers, they're buying a full platform from Workday. They're buying both HCM, and financials because it's the same data, same uh, you know architecture, and then you can do planning around both financial planning and workforce planning. So we are seeing that unlock happen. We do see CFOs see the benefit of moving to the cloud, and I think they just now are much more trusting of partners like us, right? We've already been you know managing their most precious you know data assets, their people. There's no reason we can't do that on your financials in the cloud as well.